Yep, it's somewhere here. Uh, let me see. Bit over there. Okay. <coughs> okay. Can you advance with the rest of the arrow? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, thank you for the introduction. It's great to be here. Um, I, I just have a few minutes on stress management. A couple things. I'm feeling some stress. I have to follow the person that tells us how the Norwegians do it and Olympic champion. Plus, I stand between you and your break. Uh, and I had 20 minutes, which will seem like 40 to you because you're headed to a break. Um, but I'm, I'll try to g give you sort of a blueprint to follow on what we know about stress management and how you might think about it um, as a coach. And I really geared this much more towards coaches. Oops. Oh, and the keys, are, there we go. Um, first, real quick, why do we want to be interested in stress management and coping with athletes today or helping athletes cope? I put four reasons. Some of our research on Generation Z individuals born after 1995, 96 now, shows that generation in many parts of the world struggles more with mis dealing with mistakes and adversity. Some people think it's because parents have kind of intervened and they hadn't learned how to figure it out themselves. But that's something that we get consistently reported. Um, and we've seen uh, some of our highest level athletes around the world have mental health issues. The data shows some here in Iceland that that's an issue that we need to pay attention to. Um, I got the third point from a coach I found very interesting. He, he, he's like 75, he's coached for 40 some years, and he goes, you know, the kids haven't really changed. He coaches college in the US. The athletes haven't changed, but what they're dealing with has. Social media, and he, he kind of had the slide like a suitcase. The kids are basically the same, but in our country, it's terribly school shootings, social media, expectations, so they're trying to carry a lot more and it's harder for them to deal with it. And in our country, I mean, it's so refreshing to hear about Norway, our climate is like opposite. <laughs> it's become so outcome focused. Like I'm working with a young field hockey player now who's really got it together. They don't go to camps, they go to uh, showcases so the college coaches can look at them. And we're focused on, you, you're going for an education, get it from the coach and they get to the camp and all the kids are talking about is what coach is looking at you from where. So it's so hard, and this is a kid that I'm working with, she's 18 now, but she's really got a good focus and we're having to work that hard with her to keep her on task because the culture has become so distracting, what you're rating, how many followers do you have in social media, and we're just trying to have fun, keep the job going. So, um, so today as a coach, you have to be equipped to help your athletes deal with stress. I mean, coaches have always had to do with that. But today, hopefully, we'll give you a little better information to help you augment your skills in that area. So I, uh, being a simple guy, I kind of am going to do like a three-step approach to approaching this today. Step one is, is sounds silly, but to understand stress and the stress process, which can help us if we just start there, because we kind of all know what stress is, but we never bother to define it. It's like, yeah, I'm stressed today, and we go from there. Whoops, so, so if we go to stress, this is an older definition, but I think it, it stands the test of time. There's a substantial imbalance between your physical and psychological demands placed on you. So the imbalance between the demands physically or psychologically placed on you and your response capability. So I'm asked to do something physically that I've never done before or there's expectations or somebody's watching me under conditions where failure to meet the demand has important consequences. We don't get stressed if we don't care about it. We don't get stressed if we don't think it's important. It's usually things that we think are important like making a team or you know I'm trying to get to uh, Olympitopin and I have to have a, a top six finish or that type of thing. So. If we take that a step further and we think of the stress in stages, just to help us think about it as a coach, the first stage of the stress process is the environmental demand. What is the physical and psychological stress put on the, on the athlete that we're working with? Okay, what are they asked to do? What are the expectations? What are the media expectations? 
Then the second stage is how that person interprets that demand. Not everybody interprets it equally. The amount of threat they perceive. I'll give you an example. Many years ago when I did work with the US ski team, Visa, the credit card company, had a big relationship with the Olympic Committee, and they picked the Visa athlete that would represent, during the games, all the commercials. And one athlete, one skier we had, there wasn't a camera she didn't love. She, you put her in a camera, I mean, she was great TV. They loved her. And she, that worked great. The other Olympic champion in a different year was an introvert. And when she became the, you know, who's going to turn it down because there's millions of dollars and this other stuff? But it was much harder for her to do that. So a good example is the same person perceives that situation very differently based on their personality and their background. Then the third stage that you see here is the stress response, excuse me. Um, okay, we perceive a stress and we have arousal, a general activation, how you know, charged up you are. State anxiety uh, is your worry, cognitive anxiety, or your perception of your heart racing, somatic. Muscle tension, attentional changes. Coaches have always gone through stress. You all know all these symptoms from just yourself. And our athletes go through that. And that leads to certain behavioral consequences. You know, we don't like to think of it. An athlete chokes. They got tightened up. They didn't perform well. Or they were optimal. And then that feeds back into the system. All right? So if we just, again, we're kind of taking stress apart here. But if you think about it, what kind of environment am I creating for my athletes? We just learned an exceptional case. They feel cared for. They're supported, et cetera, in that environment versus it's dog eat dog, everybody for themselves. What's going on? Then how do the individuals react to that environment? Where are my athletes in terms of their personality? And how, do they, how much threat do they perceive? Then what are their reactions to stress response? And how, what consequences does that lead to? And that feeds back into the top. So you can kind of intervene at any of those stages as a coach or have an influence. The other thing I'll just mention are sources of stress kind of situational sources, event importance is related. The Olympic Games are more important than a local competition. Now, coaches make events more important. This is the biggest game of your life. Everything's riding on this. I really want you to focus. This is really important tonight. The eight-year-old championships are critical. And the fact you're having an eight-year-old championship tells something. All right, so we create importance. Or we reduce importance, just another game, follow the plan as we go forth. Uncertainty is the other thing that causes stress. Uncertainty about, is this uh, a program they put together going to work? Uncertainty about uh, winter sports, snow conditions. What's the weather going to be like? All right. Then there's the personal sources. Urban mentioned trade anxiety, how one's personality, that kind of has you perceive more stress information from the same environment that a low trade anxious person won't. And self-esteem esteem ties into their confidence. So, okay, that's a little bit about the, the background. Now let's get to step two, the stress management strategies. And again, in the short time I have, I'll just give you things you might want to read more about or think about. And I divided in these into two categories. Indirect environment uh, climate created strategies. Um, and Elsa, in her presentation, create a caring climate that values athletes and people, not just performers. We'll do a huge thing to reduce stress. Now, if we had more time and we could go visit, et cetera, that's a lot easier said than done. There's no secret sauce. It's just how do you get the basics down really well. And some people aren't going to like other people. <laughs> and you know, there's some drama that gets in. So how do you create that in an environment where some people advance and get to go, and some people don't. So you really need to think about how do we create that climate. I think transparency has a lot to do with it. I once w worked with three teams that were trying for two Olympic spaces. And what I told them is, we just got it on the table. Everybody wants to be in the top of the podium consoling their friends who are not going. So let's kind of just get this out in the open and realize that's the deal and now move on with it versus sort of having this awkward times during training sessions. 
create a task-oriented environment. A lot of research over the years focuses on, you're much better off focusing on getting a little bit better each day, self-improvement. The winning will take care of itself. That's important, but we don't need to be constantly going over that. The research is pretty clear on that. Manipulative then importance and uncertainty as a coach. Okay, sometimes I'm gonna create a little stress. My teams are complaining about the weather, they don't wanna get out of it. I'll remind them what it was like to lose to Norway. <laughs> that sucked, okay, we're not going down that road again. <laughs> right, now other times I'm trying to reduce the importance. Coach awareness of his own or her own verbal and nonverbal. Many years ago we did a study with cross country runners and, uh, and coaches and it was on the coach's abilities to predict their athlete stress pre-competition. And I, I always loved that study. What we found is one in four coaches was good at it. Three out of four weren't very good. But the athletes were really good at predicting the coach's anxiety. Now, that, you know, it's easier. They're all looking at the coach. And our Olympic research showed coaches get uptight at the Olympic Games and it's contagious to the team. So as a coach, where are you on your stress level? In, have an assistant coach you trust have permission to tell you, you need to calm down today. <laughs> You're acting screwy. <laughs> that type of thing. So you don't, it, some of, when we did case studies of our Olympic teams over the years, some of the saddest ones were the coach didn't realize they were acting differently, they were uptight, it affected the team. If somebody could have just had a, a, a barometer to kind of measure that, might head off some things. Secondly are the stress management strategies. Urban talked a few about there, some of the breathing, breathing mindfulness that you hear a lot about today, or he described that. Relaxation training, the old progressive relaxation. You go in a dark room, you turn the lights off, you tense your muscles, relax them, go through the body. I'll come back to that in a minute. Thought stopping, self-talk management. Um, you're having a negative thought, you stop it and you replace it with something more positive. Now that has to be very realistic. I once worked with a swimmer who was getting beat at the end of her races. Now, here's where we want to know some physiology. She was a person that, you know, more slow twitch. She's got to get out there and just hold on. So she was going to get beat at the end. So her self-talk, as opposed to giving up when the other person was catching up, was something like she'd see a stop sign, like in the sense of, I got to stop that negative thought, like here we go again, I'm going to lose. And we put in a phrase, if I recall, it was something like, I may, I may lose, but I'm gonna, you're gonna die trying, was the idea that we made it so you might lose, but the other person was gonna pay the price. You weren't gonna just quit and let them go. All right, um, and finally, mental preparation routines are really, really important that we sometimes forget about. How do athletes get ready physically and mentally for competitions? Our research over the years shows the better athletes are really consistent. If they're uh, wrestling the Olympic champion, they mentally prepare the same way as somebody in the early rounds. Those athletes also have emergency routines, a stretch routine if you have like uh, weather delays. How do you maintain your focus when there's a delay? Or a shrink routine, how do you get ready when you don't have the normal time? So we work on those kind of things with them. So those are kind of the strategies we can use. In my last couple of minutes, I just want to talk to the third uh, step is field test stress management techniques. If you have an athlete learn progressive muscle relaxation, so okay, we're doing it in the dark room and you know they, they go through it and you spend a week on that, that's got to be sped up. After a while you forget the tension and they just go in there and they tell themselves to relax and associated feelings. We go from 20 minutes to 15 to 10 to 5. Then I'll have a golfer or tennis player get into their stance and hold the racket and tell themselves to relax with the racket or whatever their sport is. I once had a, a 10,000 meter runner. We practiced relaxation strategies as he was running on the last few laps when he was really tired. What's that gonna look like? You wanna incorporate the relaxation stuff into a competitive environment. So, you know, it's like, oh, if we had a solar eclipse, like, or it could be a morning in Norway, it would be dark and it would be a lot easier, but I golf in the light, which could be summer in Norway all day long. Um, 
on the diving board and while running. So I think the newer stuff is how do we get athletes to incorporate this into the actual performance? And there's something called pressure training that I, a, a lot of researchers are finding that people perform better under stress when they train under stress. But it's also like playing with dynamite a little bit. Poor coaches can screw a lot of kids up <laughs> with pressure training. Good coaches get their athletes to really learn how to deal with pressure. There was one interesting study with cricket in England where they had 18 and 19 year old elite uh, athletes were gonna practice under pressure. They explained it to them. They came up with penalties for the winners versus the losers, the athletes. They all bought in. And then they'd have these games and there'd be winners and losers and the losers would have consequences, the winners would get things. But it wasn't like the coach just doing this and the athletes, it was the coach yelling at us. They all bought into it. So it needs to be transparent and understand it as it goes through. Okay, let me just finish with a couple cautions. Um, a big need to recognize individual differences. We know there's an optimal level of emotions for each athlete and they need to get to that to the right level, psych up versus psych out. They need to learn that. The coach needs to understand those optimal levels. There's idiosyncratic mental prep routines. I remember one Olympic champion we worked with in skiing would tell him jokes up at the top of the hill, the mountain, you know, just loose or anything, and the last minute was like a zero focus. The other Olympic champion was off like this in the corner doing imagery and nobody could talk to her for 20 minutes. It's just recognizing people have different ways to get to where they want to be. Stress management techniques need to be overlearned and well practiced. Um, I did a study with wrestling many years ago at the Olympics, and the athletes who did better in their performances versus ones who were disappointed, many of them used the same stress management techniques. But I remember one wrestler told us that was successful, it was like I was turning the light switch on. I turned the switch on the lights. The other said I was trying to talk myself through it, what I needed to do. So I think these really need to be overlearned. If you ever watch a basketball game or volleyball um, and they're getting ready to serve, they'll take that slow, deep breath. They don't even think they're doing it, but you need that with your athletes. Be transparent, I mentioned that, about what we're doing. Um, the, you know, and the, the last one, I use an analogy here, be careful not to throw the athlete in the deep end into highly stressful situations. Some of it comes with sport before you taught them how to swim. So give them some stress management strategies, teach them how to swim. I remember with a downhill skier many years ago, I'm not a skier, I mean I was in the simulator in Norway trying to figure it out, but I'd ask a lot and I'd go, well, 70 miles an hour, I don't want to tell them to relax and, or use thought stopping and then hit the side of the mountain. So we kind of worked all through that about how they learned how to do that, what they could actually do when they're going down. So really kind of getting these techniques sort of figured out so they can use them in competition. So I think my time's just about up and your break is about ready to start. So those are the three areas I touched on today and thank you for your attention and back to the boss. Thank you.